Right now, uh, we want to do this every Monday through the rest of the preseason which is do a 53-man roster projection. So this is a good time for you, if you are have ever considered trying out the YouTube stream, to go ahead and hop to that because we are going to put it up on the board. Oh, that way. There we go. Uh, and you can see my screen here in terms of my, my very fancy depth chart, uh, which is just a Google sheet. But we're going to insert a row there uh, because... We're going to go ahead and make our first edit to last time. So we had two issues last time, Anthony. Uh, one is we we had a misunderstanding of the way the new quarterback rule worked. And then the other thing that we did was uh, bad math. We, we were simply one player short. So this is really our first official one because last time we did a 52 screwed up roster projection. Now, now we're going to do 53 and we got all the rules correct. So we're going to make some slight edits, and there's a couple guys that I definitely want to go in and out. So on the quarterback front, Sam Howell, Jacoby Brissett, and Jake Fromm, I think, are pretty much locks to make the roster. Um, the way the new quarterback rule works, and you're like, what new quarterback rule? Remember, after what happened in the playoffs last year to the 49ers, the NFL was like, we will allow the 47th man of you know emergency third quarterback designation that we used to have back in the league. So now on game day, you can have an extra guy active and that is de designated as your third quarterback. He can only play if your other two quarterbacks are hurt, not eligible to play any other positions, but it prevents you from putting your third quarterback just on the inactive list. And then he can't play whether it's a regular season or a playoff game. So with that said, it makes sense to carry a third quarterback. Ron, when asked about it today said, I usually carry a third anyway, which has been true for them. Uh, especially last year, obviously, they they kept Howell inactive most of the season, except for, obviously, when he was the backup and Carson uh, was was on the injured list. But Jake Fromm has had a fine camp for a third quarterback. If you get to him, you're kind of screwed anyway. Jake Fromm is is going to make the team, I think, as as the third guy. So Howell, Percet, Fromm, there's three spots down. Running back, Robinson, Gibson, Rodriguez. I think I am holding firm here at three. I like Jonathan Williams. I like, um, I think it's Nick Gore, the new guy they signed who's playing with EV in Kansas City before. Um, I like Jared Patterson. Like, they're all good backs. The problem is, for them, they're all good backs. So you keep the three that are your starters uh, or your, your highest three, and you know that if you need to bring in someone else, and even if one of these guys gets poached off your practice squad, that you'll be able to find a good running back. It is the problem with the running back market. So keeping four, to me, doesn't make any sense, Anthony. Is there space for a fullback here? It's one of the questions I definitively am trying to figure out. I think we have a fourth back in Alex Arma. I think we're going to get there in a second. Is he one of those people that you have, like, on the I fringe actually, making, like, last four cuts, I mean, uh, first four cuts type of thing? Um, Definitely he's in that range. And I also wonder if he's a guy that they can bounce to and from the practice squad all year. Mm, okay. Um, And bring him up for games. Yeah. Uh, if someone else is hurt. But I'm going to put Arma on for right now as a fullback because I actually – think that it's something the enemy wants and there's another position that I'm going to cut back on. So now we've got four backs. Yes, sir. So, it's also interesting to see what Alex does on special teams. I haven't really seen him too much, you correct. know, involved, but if he is going to be on the team, I think he will have to have He makes a couple of plays in the preseason on special teams. I think yeah. he's on. Yep. Cuz he's done a good job. Um and they trust him to play a little bit of tight end too, but mostly fullback. Mm -hmm. Okay. Receiver, McLaurin, Dotson, Samuel, Brown. That has not changed at the top four. What has changed is who is after. Um, I think Byron Pringle is making the team, and he gets the spot that Marcus Kemp had as the former chief um, who has played well and is going to contribute. Uh, Pringle's also a return guy, mm -hmm. and he's had a couple big returns in his career, which means we had Casimir Allen on last time. I think Allen's out. Dax. Ooh. Dax Milne has had a good camp again. 
I could see him making the team. Although, I do wonder if they just... Well, they'll keep five. Uh, or Sorry, they should keep six. I don't think they're going to keep seven like some people think they might. I think, I, I think this is where it sits, where you go McLaren, Dotson, Samuel Brown, Pringle, Milne. I think we just uh, we disagree on Milne. I think Milne is the practice guy. I mean, practice squad guy, and I think Casimir. I, I'm, we haven't seen it yet, but I'm expecting Casimir Allen to be a little bit more dynamic in the return game. Milne is, you know, short hands, but I want to see some, you know, dynamic return. If he is the punt returner in the preseason and, like, averages 20 yards a return, he could definitely play himself on the roster. But, mm-hmm. like, as a receiver, they're not even close. Milne's far, far advanced. He's way more precise. Yeah. He's his timing is way better. He knows how to get open. He's made big catches for this team. Allen is quick and explosive, but extremely raw and unpolished. He's small for an NFL wide receiver. Like Milne's a big dude. Like Milne, Milne goes stand next to Terry McLaurin, and like Milne's taller than Terry, I believe. Yeah, but how much is Milne going to play during the season? I feel as though like that's why Pringles. He's he's the number five guy. He's a guy that can. You know, that has actual experience that can step in for a Terry, that can step in for a, a, a Curtis. But it's also who can take snaps and, like, do you trust to get their blocking assignments right? Like, these are the kinds of things coaches care about, especially on the end of the, end of the roster. They care about reliability. It's not, hey, we got to get this guy a touch. And maybe sometimes coaches should do that more. They should go on the air on the side of explosiveness, but it's mm. not what they do. Yeah. Um, and I also get it because if something happens, you want the guy who randomly might make a great play but is going to screw up his assignment on other snaps. Mm-hmm. No, you want the guy you can rely on. So Milne has had a good camp. Yeah. He continues to make plays. And so I, I think, I mean, like a lot of guys have made plays. Uh, Jalen Sample, Bryson Tremaine, like um, another touchdown today for what's his name? Um, McGowan. McGowan's made plays. Um, that's not who I was talking about. I'm just totally blanking. Like, that's how many guys there are. I can't even remember all their names. <laughs> but Pringle, Pringle's the guy that, like, let's lock it in. He's making the team. Yeah, I like Pringle. Um, and then we'll see from there. All right, tight end. This is where I'm cutting somebody. I'm cutting Curtis Hodges. Um, and I think they're probably certainly hoping that he can make it to practice squad. But if you're going to carry Arma, I don't think you can carry four tight ends, too. Yeah. You get tight end or fullback. And maybe those are two guys that bounce back and forth between the practice squad and the regular squad all year. And they kind of, you know, Arma makes the initial 50, or maybe maybe Hodges makes the initial 53. Honestly, I probably feel better about that as a prediction. Hodges makes the initial 53. Arma gets cut. They tell him, hey, man, sign on the practice squad. Uh, we might even pay you a little bit of extra to stay here. And there's going to be games where we put Hodge or we cut Hodges and put him on the practice squad, then re-sign him on Monday and activate you for game day. So that could be a, a funky thing to watch this year. But, you know, a guy like, you know, you cut a guy and tell him, hey, we're going to re-sign you on Monday. He can go sign somewhere else. So mm-hmm. that is a risky game uh, to play. But this is, you got to make cuts somewhere. And I think that's that's going to happen. So I mean, Hodge is out for me right now. I, I like it. I like it. I think, and by the way, it's not like he's had a terrible camp, but he has not been as good as Cole Turner. Yeah. Um, and if Arm is going to make the team, you got to you got to make a cut somewhere. Okay. Offensive line: Leno, Charles, Gates, Cosme, Wiley, Paul, Lucas, Stromberg, Daniels. Here's this. This could be a big one. Daniels. Yes, gotta go. Goodbye. Thank Mason you. Mason Brooks <laughs> in. Backup guard, Mason Brooks, has been awesome. Now, that leaves them very light at tackle. And that's an issue. And it's the kind of thing where, like, does a guy like Sadiq, if he loses the job to Chris Paul, do you make a move there? Or do you try to re-cross train or retrain him at tackle to be your fourth tackle? Like, you're all of a sudden in a bad spot at tackle. But it is what it is, man. Like, Brooks has been better. Daniels hasn't been good. And if you get down to that, you probably you're trying to sign a veteran free agent anyway. What about what, what do you think of Trent Scott? I think he's got a shot, but he's probably a practice squad guy. Like Brooks uh, has been good. No, I'm just talking about at, at tackle. 
Yeah. No, I mean, I mean that's the thing. It's like you sign guys to practice squad, and, and if you have to call them up in a game, you call them up in a game. But, like, Brooks is a guy that, if there was a true open competition between Charles, Paul, and Brooks, like, and you're just basing it off of their performance in camp, Brooks would be the starting left guard right now. Yeah. You're not. You're doing a projection, right? You think Chris Paul can surpass uh, both of them, frankly, and, and that's why I think ultimately he's going to win the job is because not only is he basically as good or better right now, but you can you can see a future where he's very, very good. Um, but Brooks is a guy that I think, I think right now has done enough to make the team. Um, defensively, let's go quick here because I actually don't think there's a lot of changes, although we are one heavy, so I'm going to have to cut someone somewhere. I know where I'm going to do it. Um, defensive line, Young, Allen, Payne, Sweat, Smith-Williams, Mathis, Ridgeway, Obata, Tuhill, Henry. Uh, the rookie uh, seventh-rounder, Andre Jones, has looked very good. I just think it's a numbers game there. Uh, actually, if you are subscribed to Take Command, you might get a little bonus thoughts on Andre Jones from me and Logan. Wink, wink. Uh, so make sure you subscribe to Take Command, our latest Take 5 episode. Um, linebacker, Jamin, Barton, Mayo, Hudson. I'm going to recut Milo Eifler. Sorry, Milo. Um, I just I just don't think the position has enough snaps available to justify keeping five. Um, and if it's that or like another safety or another DB, then I'm going with the DB, um, which leaves at corner Forbes, BSJ, Fuller, Wild Goose. Um, I guess if I wanted to cut Holmes or Johnson for another linebacker, I could, but I would keep both those guys. I still think for right now, um, one guy to watch Terrell Burgess is at a really nice camp and he's a, he's a guy who can play corner safety, nickel, a little bit of everything. I could see them keeping him over like a Christian Holmes. Um, but I'm going to keep Holmes, the, the drafty from last year for right now. And then it's safety, Forrest Curl, Martin Butler, Reeves, and then Way, Sly, Cameron Cheeseman, who uh, has not had a particularly good camp. And there were long snappers that were trying out today. Uh, but for right now, that's, uh, I think, still the plan. Any uh, any defensive tiffs, any bones to pick? Uh, nah, I think I like where we are. The, the corner... That last corner spot is the one that if you wanted to shuffle some things around, I can mm-hmm. definitely hear it. But I think I think that's probably the right the right play for right now. Yeah. Okay. So that's our that's our projected official as of five forty five PM on August seventh projection. Will it change? You betcha, which is why we're gonna do it again next Monday. Obviously we'll have a preseason game uh to to base things off there, so we'll see how much it changes. When we get back here on the Hoffman Show, uh, we will take a look at what we did this weekend, including Anthony balling out flag football style. Oh, yeah, and uh, I saw Beyonce. That's next on Team 90. Thanks for watching this clip of our 2023 Washington Commanders training camp coverage. For more, check out the radio show live daily from 4 to 7 p.m. on the Team 980. We also stream live on the free Odyssey app, or you can watch the show here on YouTube at the Team 980. Subscribe right here for all our on-demand content. Click click the button. Go now. Subscribe and come on while you're at it. Let's be honest. If you made it this far, you probably liked what you saw. So go ahead and hit that like button too before another video starts. It's the polite thing to do.